Okay. So, uh, next we will be you know in another example another three or four examples and with that we will close the single phase transformer right. So, it is given that a look at the pointer a 100 kVA 440 220 volt single phase 50 hertz code type transformer has an efficiency of 98.5 percent when supplying full load at 0 0.8 power factor lagging and an efficiency of 99 percent when supplying half load at unity power factor find the iron losses and copper losses at full load right. So, this is the problem. So, now I with, with iron loss is equal to W i and full load copper loss say W c full load means that x is equal to 1 right. I mean uh, your uh, it is meaning is something like this right meaning is some suppose x is equal to you write k v a by k v a full load right this way if you write that is suppose transformer is rated some k v a right and, and and the k v a at which uh, k v a it operates. So, ratio of this thing will give you the your x right the loading factor say. So, if it is k v a is equal to k v a f l then x is equal to 1. So, that is why it is written here x is equal to 1 right. So, therefore, we know this uh, we know derive this formula. So, efficiency is 98.5 percent. So, 0 0.985 is equal to uh, your this is the 100 kVA transformer right. So, 100 uh, that is your uh, into 1000 into 0 0.8 power factor and x is 1. So, it is not shown here, but multiplied by 1 right they are divided by this same value plus iron loss plus your copper loss W i plus W c. So, if you after simplification if you simplify this then it will be 0 0.985 W i plus 0 0.985 W c is equal to 1200 this is equation 1. Now, when output of transformer half load uh, with unity power factor half load means k b a by 2 right into your half unity power factor 1 this this one is unity power factor and 100 k b a transfer half load the half into 100 into 1000 into 1. So, 50 into 10 to the power 3 watt right. Therefore, at that time efficiency was 99 percent. So, 0 0.99 is equal to then 50 into 10 to the power 3 divided by 50 into 10 to the power 3 plus w i and your copper loss will be half square because, because we know that your uh, copper loss is equal to your x square w c and x it is half load. So, x is equal to half. So, half square w c right. Therefore, let me clear it. Therefore, 0 0.99 w i plus 0 0.2475 w c is equal to 500 that is 2 equation 2. So, solving equation 1 and 2 we get w i is equal to 267.3 watt and w c is equal to 950.9 watt. So, this is iron loss and this is copper loss this is the answer. Here next is you will solve it I have made double dash double dash that is this is not example it is an exercise for you. You have to calculate the voltage regulation of a transformer having copper loss of 2 percent of the output and the reactance drop of 5 percent when power factor is 0 0.8 lagging and 0 0.8 leading. You will use that formula regulation formula accordingly you will do it this answer is not given, but this will solve it. Now, next one is that this is the example 13 here a single phase step down transformer has a trans ratio of 3 that is k is equal to 3. The resistance and reactance of the primary winding are 1.2 ohm and 6 ohm and those of the secondary winding are 0 0.05 ohm and 0 0.03 ohm respectively. If the high voltage winding is supplied at 230 volt with low voltage winding short circuited right find the current in the low voltage winding copper loss in the transformer and power factor it is given that if the high voltage winding is supplied at 230 volt with low voltage winding short circuited you have to find out the current in the low voltage winding copper loss in the transformer and the power factor already you have studied open circuit test and short circuit test right. So, in this case trans ratio is equal to k is equal to 3 high voltage side is primary say low voltage side we define as secondary here it is look at the uh, cursor right. So, R 1 is 1.2 ohm x 1 is 6 ohm R 2 is 0 0.0 ohm x 2 is 0 0.05 ohm x 2 is it is corrected x 2 is equal to your here it is 0 0.03 ohm right. So, here it is your point uh, uh, here you here it is not point 0.3 uh, just hold on. So, it is point 0 0.03 ohm right point 0 0.03 ohm. Now, so 
in this case, so refer to high voltage side your R u 1 is equal R u 1 is equal to R 1 plus k square R 2, it is refer to high voltage side the way we have seen it. So, R 1 1.2 k is 3, so 3 square into 0 0.05 1.65 ohm and this one x u 1 x 1 plus k square x 2 6 plus 3 square is actually 0 0.03 right. So, all the corrections have been made, so 6.27 ohm right. So, impedance is equal to root over R u 1 square plus x u 1 square, so it is becoming actually 6.48 ohm right. So, now the circuit in the high voltage winding sorry current in the high voltage winding where low, low voltage winding is short circuited that means short circuit current is I s c is equal to V s c upon J d 1 it is given 230 volt divided by 6.48. So, it is actually 35.47 ampere. Now, we are neglecting I 0 right. So, if you neglect I 0 then from the transformer we have seen I 1 is equal to I 2 dash is equal to same current 35.47 ampere. Now, current in low voltage winding I, the transformation ratio will use I 2 is equal to k into I 2 dash, I 2 is equal to right. So, k is 3, so it will become 106.4 ampere. So, now total copper loss if you see W s c will be I 1 square R e 1. So, it is 35.47 square into 1.65, so it is coming 2076 watt right. And here it is your uh, your uh, what you call and another thing we know the V s c I s c cos phi s c is equal to W s c I mean V i cos phi is equal to W same relationship. So, V is 230 volt current is 35.47 ampere we have to find out cos and is equal to 2076. So, it is coming actually 0.254 the power factor. So, this is very simple thing only thing is that if you look into this that uh, current in the low voltage winding it is actually 106.4 ampere quite high right. So, if you look into the problem, if you look into the problem that a single phase step down terms of this the resistance and reactance of the primary winding all this given and if the high voltage winding is supplied at 230 volt with low voltage winding short circuited find the current in the low voltage winding. So, look at that in the current in the low voltage winding this intentionally I took this problem it is coming 106 ampere. So, in your laboratory you may not have that ammeter to measure this high value of current right. So, but intentionally we took it right. So, anyway, so next is your a single phase 3 kVA transformer 230 by 115 volt 50 hertz transformer has the following constant R 1 given x 1 is given R 2 x 2 also given and R c that coal loss component uh, resistance is given and magnetizing component uh, your reactance is given right everything is given. Now, what would be the readings of the instrument? when the transformer is connected for open circuit test then short circuit test in both the test supply is given to high voltage side right supply is given both the cases to high voltage side. Now, open circuit test V 1 is equal to 230 volt K is equal to the trans ratio 230 or voltage ratio 230 by 115 is equal to 2. So, directly you can write all, all these problems you have solved like say like your single phase circuit. So, I c is equal to your V 1 upon R c. So, 0.383 ampere circuit is not done here because it is understandable right and I m is equal to V 1 upon X m. So, 1.15 ampere therefore, I 0 is equal to under root I c square plus I m square. So, it is coming 1.212 ampere. Now, input on no load to high voltage winding will be V 1 into I c that is the input at no load condition. So, it will be 230 into 0.383 so, it is basically 88.09 watt approximately your 88 watt right. Uh, now, hence the readings of the instrument are voltmeter reading 230 volt, ammeter reading 1.2 ampere and watt meter reading will be 88 watt right. Now, short circuit test here k is equal to 2. So, R e 1 is equal to R 1 plus k square R 2. So, compute all these things right. So, you will get 0 0.66 ohm and here it is x e x e 1 is equal to x 1 plus k square x 2 you compute you will get 0.8 ohm. Now, j d 1 you compute you will get 1.037 ohm full load current in the high uh, your high voltage winding it is 3 kVA transformer. So, I 1 is equal to 3 into 1000 by 230 it is equal to 13.04 ampere. Now, V s c under short circuit condition voltage is I 1 into j d 1 you will get it is 13.5 volt because short circuit test is required very low voltage right. So, V s c will be 13.5 volt. So, and your W s c that under short circuit condition the copper loss I 1 square R e 1 it is coming 112 watt. So, therefore, 
the reading of the instrument are voltmeter reading will be 13.5 volt, ammeter reading will be 13 ampere and watt meter reading will be 112 watt. Right. So, your uh, now this is the last problem I think for the transformer, it is an auto transformer. So, this, these are very simple thing. So, a 11.5 kb upon 2.3 kb single phase auto transformer when used as two winding transformer has the rated output of 100 kva. Now, if the two windings of the transformer are connected in series to form as auto transformer find the possible voltage ratio and output right. So, this is the problem. So, how we will do it? How we will do it? The two possible connections are possible like here it is here it is the auto transformer it is a this part is B and this center here some part is C right. So, same as before this current is here I 1 the upward direction is I 2 minus I 1 and this is the current going to the load say I 2. Now, B C portion B C portion say if it is 11500 volt say this is my V 2 this is the B C portion look at the cursor pointer here it is V C is equal to your V that is if it is so it is 2300 volt V 2 and A C that is A to C it is your 11500 volt right. If we think it as a your what you call two ending uh, transformer. So, B C is this and this much uh, 11500 volt and A C your what you call you have taken 2300 volt. Now, another another, another uh, one, one case is B C is equal to your 11500 volt in that case this is V 2 this is one possible connection another you can take A C 2300 volt another is B C if you take B C 2300 volt then A C will be 11500 volt that is just a or what you call just two possible connections possible right with this. So, now in this suppose for the first case in this connection where V 2 is equal to 11500 that is first case means this one here this one this one B C 11500 that is equal to V 2 and A C 2300 volt. So, in this case V 2 is equal to 11500 volt therefore, V 1 you add it up right that is your I mean add it up that is your A to B right. So, in this case it will be 11500 plus 2300 1300 uh, 13800 volt. Now, therefore, the voltage ratio your k will be 13800 upon 11500 138 by 115 right and uh, trans your what you call the transformers the rating is 100 kb it is given therefore, I 2 minus I 1 into V 2 is equal to 100 into 1000 right because it is kb we are considering your uh, converting it to volt ampere. Therefore, I 2 minus I 1 you will get 8.7 ampere again V 1 minus V 2 into I 1 is equal to again 100 into 1000. So, from which you will get I 1 is equal to 43.5 ampere just see the theories for auto transformer whatever has been done right. So, now in the therefore, you can get I 2 is equal to 8.7 right from here from this equation 8 I 1 we got 43.5. So, I 2 is equal to 8.7 plus this I 1. So, it is coming 52.7 ampere. K B A rating of the auto transformer is given by V 1 I 1. So, substitute all these values you will get 600 your K B A right. So, this is 13800 into your 43.5 this is 13800 this is 43.5 divided by 1000 you will get 600 K B A or V 2 I 2 if you make 11500 into 52.7 by 1000 here also you will give so get 600 kva right. Now, similarly the volume of auto transformer you know 1 minus 1 upon k dash volume of two winding transformer, but k dash is equal to v 1 upon v 2 right that is 138 by 115 therefore, volume of auto transformer will be 1 minus 115 by 138 into volume of two winding transformer therefore, volume of auto but volume of two winding transformer will be 0.17 right there that is your that is the answer. So, with this uh, your what you call uh, with this single phase transformer we have concluded things are very simple only thing what proportion you have to concentrate your concentrate that is open circuit test short circuit test then your auto transformer right uh, comparison of the volume of two winding transformer and auto transformers right and equivalent circuit and transformation and the efficiency as well as the all day efficiency and the voltage regulation for uni at unity power factor, lagging power factor and leading power factor right. So, things for single phase transformer is very simple. Oh, so, next we will start for your what you call that three phase induction machine it will be very I mean only at first year level. So, it is just a basic portion right. So, so three phase induction motor will start. 
So, it is actually uh, what uh, particularly as at the basic level only little bit will be covered right and uh, just see how is it and before uh, making this uh, your what you call three phase induction motor I will tell at the beginning that uh, whenever you will study this in your college see the your laboratory that an open induction machine own rotor induction machine as well as squirrel, uh, squirrel cage induction motor both own rotor as well as squirrel cage induction motor it is open thing see that stator part see the your what you call the rotor part because from here with diagram uh, uh, you can may perhaps uh, visualization will be slightly you know based on your imagination, but uh, in the laboratory definitely you have that your st open stator open stator open rotor separately such that you can see uh, uh, on your eyes that exactly what it is right. So, this is the thing we will go for uh, single phase transformer. So, hopefully that basic principle of that your induction machine I uh, hope it will not create any problem for you things are things are not uh, difficult one, but only basic purpose at first year level. So, so three phase induction motors are the motor most frequently encountered in industry they are simple low price easy to maintain I mean that is the thing and, uh, and you, you will find in industry uh, all the industries right uh, you will find the induction motors are there right because this is the this without that uh, you without that nothing will move in the industry induction motors are there. So, they run at essentially constant speed from 0 to full load sometimes constant speed means we call sometimes we make it as a you know meaning is synchronous speed. Uh, so, sometimes we call it as a constant speed right. So, uh, so, the three phase induction motor has two main parts one is stationary spark that is called stator another is a rotating part or revolving part we call it as rotor right. So, the rotor actually separated from the stator by a small air gap which ranges from 0.4 millimeter to 4 millimeter depending on the power of the motor. So, there is a there is a gap in between the stator and rotor and that gap we call air gap right. So, later we will see the power is transmitted from the stator or to rotor to air gap. So, now the stator actually consists of a steel frame which encloses a hollow cylindrical core made up of stacked lamination. I mean this photograph I have uh, I have taken from a book and this is a photocopy looks very you know looks very um, little bit black because of this photocopy and these are terminals taken out. Uh, so, this is actually your steel part and inside that you will be steel laminated right and when you go inside these are the slots where three phase windings are there. You, I, says, I said that see in your uh, what you call in your uh, laboratory uh, just to see have a view uh, just to see how the stator is as uh, the rotor is in a uh, your what you call uh, similarly for your power plant you use synchronous generator there if you see your what you call the design of this uh, synchronous generator I mean when they are repairing or something you will find it looks so beautiful that your what you call the design for synchronous generator in the power plant right. But anyway this is induction motor is a smaller size synchronous generator we have a very long rotor right uh, in any way. So, this this kind this windings are placed how it is placed these are the slots all these things that you will just uh, I, I suggest that see your what you call your laboratory that your stator part that when machine is open definitely some machine will keep you open for your what you call for your realization of this uh, construction. So, the stator consists of a steel frame I told you which encloses a hollow cylindrical core made up of stack laminations right here it is here it is and this is your steel part right. So, a number of evenly placed slots punch out of the your what you call internal circumference of the lamination provide the space of the for the stator winding. So, stator windings are here. So, I, I repeat again see in the laboratory just just to see this thing and before saying anything that you have a this is a three phase stator no in the transformer the flux was a time varying right the difference is that the transformer is a static device it is a rotating device, but in the case of transformer the flux was your time varying right in this case that in the your stator three phase if you supply uh, the power that we have studied three phase circuit. So, three phase windings are there. So, it will create a three phase your what you call rotating magnetic field, but rotor not here rotor will I will show you separately right. So, three phase magnetic field as soon as uh, it creates the because of this your uh, your what you call uh, that uh, we if you if we neglect the leakage uh, resistance and reactance like transformer then a voltage also will be induced in the stator winding in each phase right. So, this is stator of three phase induction motor. So, in this case 
the rotor is also composed of punch lamination these are carefully you are stacked to create a series of rotor slots to provide space for the rotor winding. So, here also I have taken from a book this figure looks black because of the photocopy. So, this is actually squirrel cage motor. So, this is the squirrel cage rotor rather right and here here whatever see some kind of bar kind of things it is squirrel cage rotor the slots are there and bars actually are placed into that and for each a and both end of this rotor actually your what you call it is welded by a copper uh, because this is made of uh, your what you call copper. So, both sides are your, your what you call you punch together and welded such that it is short circuited itself. So, why we will see later. So, this is squirrel cage rotor I suggest in your laboratory see the open induction machine definitely it will be there right that there, there just that you can have a better visualization. So, we use two types of rotor windings. One is that conventional three phase windings made of insulated wire that, that we call induct own rotor induction motor some circuit diagram we will show it later. And there is a squirrel cage winding that is squirrel cage induction motor right. So, but ultimately operating principle of both the things are same uh, final operating uh, principle is same, but wound own rotor case we will see through slip rings your later I will show you circuit diagram that registry uh, your resistance can be connected and at the time of run, uh, or what you call at the and finally, when it slowly and slowly resistance will be cut down and all these things will be short circuited together. So, rotor actually for induction uh, machine right rotors are short circuited right it is a self starting. So, how? So, so a squirrel cage rotor is composed of your what you call BR copper bars they are the bar was showing in the diagram right slightly larger than the rotor which are pushed into the slots. I suggest you see in that your what you call in the college that oh, uh, this thing your open machine uh, and then you will easily understand. The opposite ends are welded of two copper endings so that all the bars are short circuited together right it is a short circuit. The entire construction bars and endings uh, your resembles a squirrel cage from which the name is derived later we will see this right. In small and medium size motors the bars and endings are made of die cast aluminum molded to form an in your what you call an integral block. Now, the and, and own rotor case will so give you the circuit diagram later has a three phase winding similar to the similar one of on the stator. The winding is uniformly distributed in the slots and is usually connected in a star right. The terminals are connected to three slip rings which turn with the rotor with that circuit diagram I will show you the circuit diagram I will show you later right. So, the the revolving slip rings and your associated stationary brushes enables us to connect external resistors in series with the rotor windings right. So, the external resistors are actually mainly used during the startup period under normal uh, running condition the three buses are short circuited right under normal running condition uh, the three buses are short circuited. So, when you do experiment particularly in your second or third year induction machine experiment at that time own rotor machine definitely will see. So, when you will do the laboratory experiment at that time you can see this, but I, I am not sure whether you will do the same experiment the first year or not right. So, but these are the thing, but if you are a pure electrical engineer then you, are, you will definitely see it in your second year or third year electrical machine laboratory right. With this thank you very much we will be back again.